Hey everyone. So I've been trying to make this video for a really long time, but I've never really had the time. And I don't even have anything really planned out exactly what to say. But uh, Keegan's napping, and he actually took a nap on his own. It wasn't a lot of work today, and it was really shocking, but um, pleasantly surprised. So I have some time. Um, this is Sassy. He's playing next to me. Uh, so. Anyway, I wanted to make a um, update about elimination communication, uh, also known as uh, natural infant hygiene, um, stuff like that. Uh, some people call it infant potty training, but it's not potty training at all, so I'll get into that. So I don't really like saying that, but... So basically what elimination communication is, is a parent or caregiver uh, choosing to pick up on the signs that babies naturally give uh, that they need to eliminate, you know, pee or poop. <laughs> so, um, and that is something, uh, something that you were born telling your parents. Just like, um, when babies tell you, or they tell you in certain ways that they're hungry, or they tell you in certain ways that they're tired, uh, they also make signs and try to tell us, uh, by crying or, um, nonverbal communication, just different things that they do. They, they try to cue us and let us know that they need to go. Uh, and so, when you're doing elimination, you are choosing to pick up on those things, to learn them, to train yourself. It's more a pie train for the, for the caregiver or the parent. Um, but you are choosing to pick up on those things yourself. And, um, what was I saying? And helping the baby go in the most hygienic place and way possible. Uh, which is, means like on a little potty or a bowl or in the or over the toilet, um, something like that, uh, which is much more hygienic and um, than a diaper. Because I mean, think about it: a diaper, a uh, baby is sitting in their fecal matter or urine for hours at a time. Well, probably not fecal matter for hours at a time. Hopefully, hope people change those right away. But um, urine, they kind of um, the thing is to have the most absorbent diaper and have your baby be able to pee multiple times in a diaper before it needs to be changed and uh, kind of like people think that the best diapers are the ones that can hold the most urine and that kind of thing so I used to think that way too uh, but it's kind of weird how once you start with the elimination communication thinking and once you see how different it can be you can never go back to that mindset of just um, having a baby sitting in a diaper in its own urine and it's interesting but I'm not judging those who choose to use diapers obviously I mean um, it's not, anyway, I don't, I don't think like that. Um, I don't think that you're a better parent if you do elimination communication or anything like that. I just think that, uh, it is something that kind of found us and it's something that out of the blue I just learned about and I realized, wow, I can tell when she needs to poop and, um, you know, I heard about this in the past, so let me look into it. And it just happened to, I was really skeptical, but it happens to work and it, happens to make her happier and so it works for us and I really feel like when you're an attachment parent uh, doing elimination communication kind of deepens your bond because you have another area where your baby is relying on you for something and is telling you um, about a need that they have and you're fulfilling it so um, anyway so what signs are there are um, some babies will do like a wiggle um, some babies will cry a certain way um, what else, what does she do? Um, there's like an urgent babble, um, that she does, that she used to do, um, when she would, needed to poop when she was younger, um, we started around three months, I believe it was, um, she would make this, like, like, face, <laughs> so, like, almost like a, like a donut face, like a Cheerio face, <laughs> so, and then I knew that it was coming, um, now she, I don't know, she never really... <laughs> She doesn't really have to tell me when she has to um, poop anymore because she waits until her potty tunity, her upper potty opportunity, get it, whatever. Um, and so she waits until she's already told me that she needs to pee or she's already on the potty peeing to go poop. So she doesn't, it's not a separate thing that she tells me. She waits for that opportunity. Um, I probably change, I probably change a diaper like never, but. Um, it's really, really rare that there's a poopy diaper or a poopy trainer or whatever that she's wearing. Because most of the time she doesn't wear diapers. She just 
wears uh, training pants or underwear. And um, diapers are just a every now and again thing. Um, I like Rovia diapers a lot because, um, I don't know, I just think they're cute and they seem really comfortable. And she just doesn't go in them. She'll just hold it even though she's in a diaper for um, hours at a time until she tells me that she really needs to go and then she goes on the potty or whatever. It's um, So she's pretty much diaper free at this point. I mean, we do have misses where um, the communication didn't go through for some reason, someone was distracted, um, something like that happens, and we mi we have misses, but, I mean, it's no big deal, it's just a little pee, uh, so, I mean, whatever. So it's not like she is, you know, just peeing all over us all the time, <laughs> or peeing and pooping everywhere, I mean, she's crawling and uh, cruising and all that, and it's not like she just all of a sudden just poops or pees all over herself. Um, so, and that's the thing, that babies are born, a lot of people don't realize that babies are born with um, control over those muscles, just like adults, and um, they have, they know when they're going to go, and um, it's not something that just happens um, by accident, they're, and so they are able to, um, Cecily can go, um, you know, a little while holding it, and she doesn't, I mean, she doesn't pee every 15 minutes, she can go hours, um, until she needs to pee again, she pees a large volume at once, and, um, so, it's when babies are diaper trained, that they lose telling that those signs, and they lose the ability to control things properly, is when they are diaper trained, so if you think of it that way, um, that using traditional diapers is training your baby to unlearn those instincts, uh, and so when you get to a diaper, tra uh, a diaper training, a potty training age, it's tougher because you've trained your baby that they need, they need to feel safe and comfortable going in a diaper all over themselves, like next to themselves. And then all of a sudden, nope, now you have to go in this toilet. <laughs> so it's kind of a shocking thing and it's very hard for some toddlers. And, um, I mean, some kids go all the way up to four years old, five years old, um, not being potty trained because of that difficulty of that after being diaper trained for so long. So, um, and I saw that when I was, uh, I was potty trained Keegan, um, about seven or eight months ago, I think it was. And, um, yeah. And he, I, I just saw how it was kind of a difficult transition for him. Like he only potty trained, it only took a week to potty train him. So he was pretty easy to potty train, but thankfully, um, just by luck, but <laughs> He, um, I saw how it's kind of a, I mean, it's, it's kind of weird for them because they're so used to diapers, you know, and, um, with elimination communication, babies are usually potty independent, um, at a year to eight, somewhere between a year and 18 months, they're completely potty independent. So they're, they're knowing when they have to go, they go and do it themselves and take care of it all themselves, um, at that age. And um, if they do, if you're only doing EC part-time, because you can do that, it doesn't have to be an all-time thing like what we do, then you can, uh, you, you might be doing some type of potty training, but since the toilet and using the potty isn't a new surprising thing, it's a lot easier for kids that um, par parents have practiced or caregivers have practiced um, elimination communication. So, but anyway, it's just been wonderful for us. Um, she's pretty much diaper free. She has, uh, most nights she has a miss in the middle of the night and that's my fault because, um, she wakes up to nurse and kind of squirms and tries to tell me, but sometimes I'm, I'm so asleep that I don't, um, like I'm not coherent enough to, to potty her or change her and she's too tired to want to go. So I'll put her on the potty, but she cries. So we're still kind of trying to figure out the night thing, but as of right now, I'll just like switch out what she's wearing, um, if she's wearing like a waterproof trainer or something at night, and uh, then just go back to sleep after that. But, um, so we're trying to figure that out still, but um, otherwise she's just in underwear or trainers all the time, and um, she just tells me when she has to go, and sometimes she doesn't feel comfortable going when we're out, so she'll hold it the whole time we're out, and that's fine. Um, she doesn't obviously get to a point where she's like hurting herself by holding it. And, um, if she is trying to tell me and I don't get to it, then, I mean, obviously she will go, but that doesn't really happen often because I, I really have, uh, kind of come to being used to paying attention to her signs. So it's kind of a process of learning about each other. 
and um, yeah, it's just really great. I just love it. I wish uh, more people would do it. I, I mean, I'm the only one other than one other person in my town that I know that does it. And, um, and I wish more people would consider it or look into it or there was more awareness about it because uh, I think it's a wonderful thing. And um, yeah, it's just funny how I was like this cloth diaper obsessed person with like this 100 plus diaper stash and um, I just loved all the different, having all these different brands and trying out new ones and selling other ones and it was just like this big thing for me. And then I, you know, this elimination communication found us and it felt so right and instinctual that now I'm left with all these diapers, like what the heck do I do with these? So, I mean, some of them I sold for more trainers, but um, she has way too many trainers now because she does not need that many. Obviously, I mean, she's going all day in one pair of underwear. Why does she need 24 pairs, right? And um, <laughs> it's just silly. But um, they have to match her outfit, right? No. Uh, so it's just funny how you don't think, sometimes with some things in parenting, you, don't, you, you hear of something and you're like, oh, I would never do that. That, I don't believe that that's true and then when you do it for yourself it just becomes such a big part of your life so anyway if you have any questions about elimination communication just let me know I uh, just want to clear up some myths about it it's not infant it's not potty training you're not forcing the baby to do it it's something that they naturally do and you're just assisting with and um, yeah so just wanted to clear that up and uh, uh, leave me some comments and give that thumbs up and I will um, have other updates later. Bye.